it is your favorite girl Anne Marie and I, today I was kind of like going through the millions of palettes that I have in my collection and I was thinking like there are some palettes that I just absolutely regret buying have y'all ever went through y'all makeup collection and regret buying some products <laughs> to me I know that I do YouTube and I buy a lot of products just to review for you guys or bring banging tutorials to you guys but some of the things that I purchase are like basically duds. so hopefully you guys enjoy this video if there is a section in my beauty collection that you would like me to go through and share with you guys what I regret buying let me know down below in the comments but let's just go ahead and jump off into the palettes I regret buying so before we jump off into this video I would love for you guys to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already as well as click the notification bell it means a lot to me if you would like to share this video just hit that share button I mean rate this video anything that you can do to help me and my channel and help you guys with my channel it will be appreciated. So I have three high-end palettes and I have four drugstore slash affordable palettes. I'm gonna start off with the drugstore affordable palettes. And this is not to shade any company, let's put that out there right now. A lot of these products, or I'ma say most of these palettes, I have other products from these companies. It was just these palettes in particular that I just didn't enjoy. So if you're a company watching, don't think I'm hating on your company or I just don't like your brand because that's not the case. Just for some people, it's a hit or miss with different items just like any other items out there in the world. So like I said, I'm going to start with the drugstore slash affordable products and the first one I have is the MUA eyeshadow palette. This one is the Smoky Eyeshadow Palette. Now, MUA was like brief short-lived in my CVS when I was living in Baytown, Texas and when they first came out I just like bought everything that was in my CVS at the time because I had never seen MUA before. It's really the brand Makeup Academy and I know this is like really big in like the UK and all that but when it hit in my CVS I was like super excited to pick it up but I did do a couple of looks with this and I reviewed it way back and I kept a hold of it a lot of my makeup academy products that I did pick up y'all I think I decluttered them within over the years but for some reason I tried to hold on to this palette and let's just go ahead and put it out there it's not a bad palette especially for at the time that drugstore was coming out with MUA and stuff it wasn't a bad palette but over the years of getting to know more drugstore products and eyeshadows and all that good stuff this formula just wasn't as good as the newer things that were coming out just to swatch a few a few mattes it has three mattes and the rest is shimmer and this is a 10 pan eyeshadow palette so these look really good and promising but they're just not like the best like you see this it's not the best that you could find in the drugstore. The black is, you know, it's, it's almost there. But they're not just like as great as I thought, but they were good at the time. And I can do makeup looks with every palette that you see. Just let me know down below in the comments. But I mean, it is what it is. These colors are smoky colors. And maybe that's one of the reasons why I don't like it because I don't really do too many smoky looks. But it just, to me, isn't the best eyeshadow palette that was made in the drugstore. Okay, so now this next one I was highly disappointed in. I couldn't understand why it wasn't better than what it was supposed, what it was supposed to be. And it just like disappointed me really bad. This is the Revlon Color Stay, not just your, not just nudes palette. I. You guys, I would have the year that these palettes came out in and all of the specs and details to it because I just can't remember off the top of my head. But this palette, I was super excited to 
pick up in the drugstore. This one is called Passionate Nudes. As we all know, color stay foundation and pressed powders and all that stuff was like a very good line. So I had high hopes for this palette and and it just looked appealing and it looked like one of the Maybelline nudes palettes and stuff, all the different ones that they were coming out with in that line. That's what this reminded me of. But you guys, the Maybelline, it's another 10 pan eyeshadow. You have half mattes, half shimmers. This faded into nothing. This did not work on the eyes. It did not stand out. It didn't like it didn't do anything it was powdery it was ridiculous like you guys it was really ridiculous like none of them played off to be a good palette at all like even this last shimmer it just almost fades into a transparent shimmer like it, it just didn't do anything if there's any palettes in here that I show and you guys feel a different way about it let your girl know I would love to have the conversation down below in the comments about your opinions and my opinions, how you felt about the palette versus how I felt about the palette. Some of these palettes may be your holy grail and a palette that you can't live without. They're just not mine. So let's talk about it in the comments down below. I would love to hear your feedback. So the next palette that I was super like you guys, I was super super upset with this palette because I almost have every single palette that's made by this company and some of the palettes I was like you know what I don't use those as much as I use these but some of them I use way more some of them are my holy grail this one was just like what happened and I know every company tries their best not to have that flop item or that dud item. But in my mind, this one was one. It was that one mess up by the company. And it is Juvia's Place of Freak Palette. You guys, I really thought I was going to love this palette. The colors in here is like, whoa, bomb, what? Yes, African Pride, this and that, like, Saharan dust, Lion King scenery, like it just hit me like that. But honestly, you guys, I did a live tutorial on Facebook when I used to do lives on my Facebook and I used this palette and I was just like, whoa. I really wanted to call Julia up on my phone and be like, take this off the market, send it back to the lab, reformulate with what you formulated with, with in the Magic Palette and the Nubians Palette. Redo this and bring it back out. Like, that's what I wanted to do, but I don't have Juvia's number. She don't know who I am. Even if I would have tweeted her, she'd just probably block me or something just because all the shimmers, great. These matte colors, I don't know what happened. Now, I know the Aya, the yellow, I know yellow is so hard to formulate. I know yellow is so hard to get perfect. So I wasn't too mad about the yellow because I know the yellows are hard. But sis, what happened to all the other mattes? Your mattes have never been like, first of all, look at it, you guys. Every last one of the mattes are patchy AF. Now this shimmer is bomb. But look at it, you guys. Look at that yellow. Look at the blue. The blue has, it has makeup so far in it that you can see the patchiness in it. Yellow just, I mean, it just didn't do so well, like whatsoever. This orange, this orange just took a, like a nose dive into the wrong formula. Now the gold, the shimmer color is bomb. And I think that's why I kept the palette so long because of the shimmer colors. These mattes would not blend into each other for nothing. And I saved this one for last in the in the drugstore affordable side. This palette, I know, I know I'm gonna get so much hate for even saying it, but you guys, I'm only speaking my truth. I'm only speaking from my experience. Mm, keep it cute and classy in the comments because I know it's coming. I know I have 
quite a few people that is on this PR. And I know I tried to be on the PR for this company. And even if they were still to come to me to this day, which maybe not after seeing this video, they may not in my DMs or anything and ask me to be on their PR, I would be more than happy. I just would not be able to use this particular palette because this particular palette did not. It just wasn't, it was more hyped up than what it was supposed to be like. I waited so long, you guys. I waited months to get this palette. I checked the website uh, religiously, like check the website, and it was always sold out. Pause, comment down below what palette you think I'm talking about. I'll wait. Did you guess it? Because I'm pretty sure you didn't guess it. I'm pretty sure you did not pause the video to comment what you thought the palette was. As much as all of y'all like, pick, pick it, pick your jaw up. Pick your jaw up. The box of crayons by the crayon case, you guys. I did a whole look with this too on my channel and it just, I used this palette that one time. I love the fact that she had every color in the rainbow, every color in the crayon box. I love the fact that she played off of school supplies for her company. Like I said in the beginning with the disclaimer, this is not to bash any company. This is not to say I don't like anything from any of these companies. But this palette, I would have been okay if it was always out of stock. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie, doing these swatches make me be like, okay, maybe I could work with it. Maybe I should give it another try. Cause these colors are coming off good besides the black. I ain't gonna front besides the black. But will I ever pull it back out and try it again? So that was all four of the drugstore slash affordable. All right, you guys. So let's move on to the three palettes that I regret buying. These three palettes, I really, 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 really thought that they were like the best buy ever and then it quickly faded. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the Kat Von D Pastel Goth palette. Oh y'all when I seen this let's scratch off the fact that Kat Von D had all this bull crap going on in the world in the internet and all that good stuff like let's just forget all that. I don't like Jeffree Star for the person he is, but he makes bomb ass products, okay? So let's skip past that. So when she came out with the Pastel Goth, like me and my coworker, I jumped up and went and bought me and my coworker one. And the packaging looks dope. It's Kat Von D. I've been loving Kat Von D since she was a tattoo artist at LA Inc. I think it was called on the TV show. Like that's how far back I've been liking Kat Von D. But I didn't never think pastel really meant pastel. Like when do people actually use pastel eyeshadows? I mean, you just don't pull out a straight all matte pastel palette on an everyday basis. Like colors is very soft, but like I said, they are patchy. Can't lie, they're not just like boom bam, it's the greatest. Cause it's not, look at that, look at the swatches. It's it's really trash. So I regret, even though the hype of it and the looks of it and the promotion of it was like bomb diggity, almost had me like about to lose my job trying to stalk the internet for it. Ugh, I'm so mad that I spent my money on it. It, it, it is just, it's sad. The other one is like, from the same brand, let's not get it twisted, it's from the same brand. Once again, I was super, super, super excited to get this palette that was my very first, no, I lied, it was my second palette from the Kat Von D line. And I just was like, I need it, I want it. At the time, I was like, it's so freaking big that I need it. It's going to be everything that I ever dreamed of, and I used it once. It's the Matte and Melts palette. Love the idea. Matte, Metals, see it, get it. This was really hyped up, too. It was a really good palette. I can't even lie. I can't. 
can't front about it. I thought it was super dope. My wife bought it for me one time. I think it was our very first date, actually. She took me to go buy it after we left this like really expensive restaurant and we were super drunk from the wine and stuff like that. So I was super excited to even get it and that she bought it. I'm so sad to say that I barely even freaking use it. I was excited that it was so big and it worked out so great and it has shimmers and mats. It reminded me of the Shade and Light palette and all that good stuff. Shade and Light palette was all masks, but these masks played off of it and made me think like, yes, I need another palette like that. Plus they have shimmers, I was all sold for it. But honestly, you guys, the damn palette is just too big. It doesn't have the right transition shades. I cannot use this palette for just an everyday look and only dig in this palette. It just won't happen. This shade here, Suede is too light for a transition shade for me. This will be a brown, a brown color. And then Oak is too dark for a transition shade. It's more of a cut crease. I mean, it's more of a crease shade for me. Three, maybe four colors right here in the Pastel Goth palette. So it's like, it was almost a waste of time. Why don't I use it? Like, why don't I use this? Because it's too big? Because I have to play off of something else to go with it? Why? But I should, and I don't. All right, so to be honest, this last palette, once again, my wife bought, she bought the entire collection when this first dropped. And even though I knew in my heart that I would not probably use this palette, I still had to have it just to have it in my collection. And that is the collector and the addict in me. It's a regretted purchase. And I know y'all about to flip out. I know y'all got something to say and I'm sorry, but it is. This Fenty palette, this was the Galaxy palette, the very first palette that she came out with. Y'all, the palette looks bomb. The palette was made with so much care and so much, like, who in the hell rocks all shimmers? Who in the hell make a whole look of just this palette? I knew that I, nine times out of 10, wasn't gonna use it, but I had to have it because it was Fenty, it was Rihanna. I needed it because it is what it is like. She came out with a beauty line. I had to have it. I won't even pull this palette out to use one of the shades. So this palette, of course, was a regret, honestly. Probably are the best shimmers, but no, they're not. They're unique colors. On camera, that is showing pink. On my arm, this is showing goldish orange, honestly. I don't know if I can get y'all to see it any other kind of way. Unique ass colors, bomb ass shimmers maybe. Like, they're not the greatest. I hold this in my collection just because it's fancy. Like, I never use these on my eyes, you guys, never. So there you have it, you guys. Those are my affordable slash drugstore and high-end palettes, eyeshadow palettes that I just regret buying. Like, let me know down below in the comments, what are some of the eyeshadow palettes that you can look right now into your collection and say you regret buying? Cause I know I can't be the only one. If there's a conversation that needs to be had about any palettes that I showed today, in today's video, then let's go ahead and have the conversation down below in the comments. Keep it cute and classy, or you will get blocked. That's just a period. But that is it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if y'all would like me to do any other part in my collection. And, you know, let you guys know what I would regret buying. I would do that. And, in the words of my loyal subscriber, you guys keep shining, and I will catch y'all in the next